We fight like men, women, and women who dress up like men for lame Final Fantasy V references. Today, we're going to talk about the people who made this game, but we're going to talk about the newest game they made. So, from the people, the original team that made the Four Heroes of Light on the original DS, we have Bravely Default. Now, as you can see, this is the collector's edition. So, like usual we'll just be taking a quick peek at what we get to you so we're forced to get all the contents out to show off the box and that will creak the game doesn't like coming out so easy eh it didn't make this thing very nice in my opinion the box is kind of meh so you got the box. The outside looks very nice. Sadly, mine was damaged just a little bit on the bottom there. And uh, GameStop did put a sticker on it, but I was able to remove it. But it did leave some residue. The inside's absolutely not impressive. And this comes out, and the book hangs out on the side there. As for the contents, of course, you get a bunch of cards, for one thing. Now, I do not know if these actually work in the booklet. It has the same design as the uh, booklet part, I believe. I think that's it. Let, let me double check. Because when you start the game, it does a, uh, a cutscene. Yeah, you got to use that. So, uh, I do not know if it functions as that. But you get deck cards. The first few have a plain, simple art design on them. And then you get a bunch of more nicer ones, in my opinion. It's kind of going to be kind of hard to show off all these. I'll try my best. For anyone who just wants to see them. I'll give them each a little second now, real quick. Uh, these ones are all pretty nice. It's a pretty nice drawing of them and that. I've met a few of these characters all way. Not all of them. Some of them, oop, that one dropped. <laughs> okay. Just finish that. I just met that guy. And I met him too. Might give some people an idea where I am in the game. Kicked his ass. Killed him. Yeah, I mean, seeing a lot of killers I've always met. <laughs> Killed him. Oh my, there's a lot of cards here. I've already looked through them once. And there you go. And in case that one didn't get any time, there's the one that actually dropped in case that didn't get time. Very simple, very small. Uh, if you want them compared to normal cards, uh, they're definitely smaller than normal cards. As far as I know, they don't have any functionality in the game. The only one you need is the one that's on the back of the booklet. And of course you have the game itself. Which, uh, of course, features the really classic new style of 3DS booklets. Our Folded Square. Oh, a little longer than Square today. But, uh, I guess it gets the basics done. So I guess it's not absolute awful. It's also odd because you need, uh, you need that. But, nicely, the game does allow you to skip the scene that you need it for, so... I guess that was a smart thinking on their side. And the art book is flappy, is not hard covered. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the artwork here, can we? Got one of one of the main characters there. Sketches of all. You have to skew some of the quickness trying to get through these. Because I know some people want to be like, GET ON WITH IT! That's a pretty nice picture, but a little uh, seductive looking. Uh, the chasm, which is part of the storyline in the early part, we'll be talking about that. Well, we can talk about it now. Uh, the game starts off as this character. Though you get a little introductory to everyone in their current predicament. And what they're doing. And uh, basically, you start out as him. His town gets swallowed up by the chasm, and it ends up being what the hell going on? Uh, apparently, some duchy is trying to kill off 
the uh, vessels of the crystal, actually this seems to be a debate on whether they're being killed or captured, but uh, you basically went into the vessel of the wind, and the other two characters, this guy has amnesia, and the younger goal you saw earlier uh, betrays whole people because uh, they're acting like barbarians, and uh, that goes against whole code. So she basically says, fuck you, I'm kicking your damn ass for burning that village. Then burn it all down, but burn the small section there, this crow fella here. Which oddly, I actually like his design, which is a bit sad since he's a sadistic asshole. And that's about all I'm going to go into the story, Willie Dale. You go on a journey, and I'm sure you'll find out there's some probably a conspiracy or something behind. Uh, the, as you can see with the cards of that, and you're going to see here, because I looked through this, there are different organizations, so it looks like you're going to basically run into different parts of the, um, parts of this, uh, duchy that are hunting you down, so. Of course, not all of them are affiliated. Like, this one you just saw, uh, is a company in a town and not affiliated with them. But I'm sure some of these groups are affiliated with the duchy, so they are probably people you will have to fight at some point. A lot of the designs are very nice, and you can see they're definitely very reminiscent of the Four Heroes of Light style. But I can definitely tell you that graphically, that it has a lot more added to it. There's a lot more nicer detail to the models, where they were very simple in Heroes of Light. They still have a simple touch to them, but there's a lot more expression. Like when they're angry, happy, and such. You can see a lot more expression in their faces, in my opinion. Almost done through this book. But uh, the plot so far seems pretty standard, so I'm not going to probably say it's going to be incredibly deep. But it could be, it could be. It so far is uh, okay, but it seems like it's taking a pretty standard direction so far. And I'm sure a lot of people might be digging this artwork, because there's a lot of nice artwork in this. I kind of wish it was a hard cover book, though. Just didn't have to be like a severe hard cover, but... Just a little would have been nice. Sorry about going through it really quick, though. Pause for a few seconds, that, so... If you want to see it, you can just pause. Yeah. But yeah, the back here, we got a lot of nice little background parts. And the environments in the game so far seem pretty good. Oh, there's one you're going to run into early in the game. Now, uh, I do want to talk about the backgrounds. While the characters in that are all 3D, the backgrounds are oddly all in a 2D style. It's kind of like playing Legend of Mana, except all the characters are 3D. <laughs> Ooh, bless me. Sorry. Can that be the end of the book? And then you also get a soundtrack sample CD. I thought it was a full soundtrack, but when I opened it and looked uh, here, it says a mini album. So, but uh, if I never quickly, you do get quite a bit, it looked like. Yeah, that's all you get on now. I haven't listened to it yet. It's pretty simple in its design. Whoop. Don't drop that. So overall, I'd say not too bad. I, I don't really get the whole thing with the cards. I mean, if they were used for something... Ooh, I hope I'm not getting cold. If they were used for something, I think they'd be nice, but... They don't... They don't have enough flair, in my opinion, to be interesting enough. The uh, Echo of the August War Zero also came with a deck of cards, but those were playing cards. Uh, the art book and soundtrack... Nice ads, and of course, the game, like I said. So let's get on to the meat and grind of the game. So the game is, uh, if you're thinking it's going to be a lot like the Four Heroes of Light, um, no, it does not have the gym system. It is a very classic turn-based style, uh, <clears throat> classic turn-based style RPG. 
Um, but it does have some different things. It's titled Bravely Default. Actually, straight out tells you two neat features in the game's combat. Default is when you defend. And this is where I have to appreciate because I've I've talked about before where defend is usually a very worthless option in a lot of RPGs. You have to really put some thought behind your battle system to really make it useful. A lot of times it's just not. Default is your defend option. And when you default, you're basically stacking torns. You get brave points. When you use brave, you basically stack torns. And you can get, I believe, up to four torns in a straight row for each character. Now you could also, you don't have to get brave points, you could take a penalty and get negative brave points, which means you have to skip your torn until you reset back to zero. So there was also strategies. You could like start a random fight and just go all out with four torns each character and take the penalty and kill it in that round as opposed, if you're pretty sure you could, so you could kind of make grinding really fast or, you know, set up a really long set of combo moves in that for a boss and just beat it down into the door. And I find it very useful for uh, buffs in that, like the monk class. I find it useful to get a few brave points and then stack up tones and then buff and then use like a really strong move of that. So I think it's going to be very interesting later on. So far there are not enough moves for me to make a real huge advantage over it yet. I played about six hours I believe and I'm in the desert of the Wind Crystal area. It's where I am if anyone wants to get a general idea of how much I've played. Now there are a lot of different things in this, uh, but these, these parts go on online. Now you have all your standard stuff with, uh, there's a job class system like Final Fantasy V and the he Four Heroes and such. And you collect job classes. There's job levels and your individual character levels. So it's all basic there. It's nothing weird like the gym system and the four heroes. And uh, you want abilities. And you can, like five and tactics, you can equip the additional job thing. And you can equip the support thing from different jobs. So there's a lot of combination fun now, which is going to be nice. Um, equipment does not show on your character which is kind of a disappointing little touch they could have done. Weapons do, weapon shields and that, but helmets and armor and that do not, so. Um, it's pretty much standard in that aspect. There's money, there's, there's nothing too wacky in its offline mode. Now, online, you have a lot of additional content. Now, first thing, there's a interesting mode where you can summon your... Each person can pick one of their characters and send a move online. So you can go to um, summon and send. And basically whatever move, it'll go back to the normal attack menu. And whatever move you do, it'll do the move and then it'll send that move online. Now, if you're friends with anyone, that move will automatically basically um, be chosen. It, it's what when somebody summons you use. But when you're friends with somebody, you can choose that each day. I believe it refreshes for each new day. But, um, you get uh, random invites too. Every day you can talk to the save point, which is a nice little reference to the Four Heroes of Light. It's a travel again. So that's a nice little reference. Actually, there's a lot of little references uh, to the four heroes of light in the game but um you can get random invites and uh basically connect to random people and it is not uh region selected you can be in canada europe i've gone people all around the world so far so there's no like individual area so you don't have to worry about oh my friend lives across the sea i probably can't use him and uh, another thing you can do, and you can only do this with friends and not randoms. Friends, you can actually link to one character, and that one character could basically leech off skills that he has that you don't have yet. Like, when I started the game, I actually had Carter's uh, friend... Uh, 
I have him in my game. And uh, I was able to leech off monk skills that I don't even have yet from him on my main kill. Though. And now he's on the guy with the amnesia wing bell. But um, it's, it's an interesting idea. And you would think all these things, like being able to summon... Because like when I first started, you know, I got killers who were able to like deal out like 500 damage. And you can always summon them once per day, just nibble. Uh, I think it's once per day for your friends. Uh, random invites don't seem to refresh. You just get more new invites. But, um, you would think this would make the game overpowered. Not so. Aside from the first boss fight, um, the boss fights have been pretty challenging, actually. Even though I can summon overpowered people here and there if I, ha if I have some available, and I got kill a character reaching off, and you can link each character to a friend, so if you have enough friends on your 3DS, you can link each character to a friend and reach off skills that you may not have. And the game was still actually pretty decently challenged. Two bosses, in fact, were actually incredibly long and annoying, to be honest, in a way, because the, th uh, the thief guy kept healing himself. It was really fucking annoying, but... Put up a fight. It wasn't like, oh, summon, pfft, dead. Okay, moving along. La, da, da. The first fight kind of went, the first boss fight went kind of like that. But after that, a lot of the boss fights started getting a several thousand health. And I have not ran into anyone with, like, anywhere over 500 damage. So, it, it's looking like they actually, like, balance this somehow. And I'm not sure if there was a system to make it where you can't go to it, like, maybe get, like, a level 50 portion of that. Because most of the people I've seen I've gone were, like, level 10 at most so far. So I think there might be a little adjustment to what kind of people can link up to you, maybe. Um, not 100% sure. But uh, the fun system would probably override that, because you just directly get your friend uh, added to the list, so somebody might be able to comment more on that. But of course, the game just came out in America, and it's been out in Europe, I think for, what, two months? A month? And of course, Japan's had for ages. Now, um, another system, and this kind of reminds me of uh, Dragon Quest Seven with an online system. Uh, in Dragon Quest Seven, you made a town and you got residents and stuff to come to it. Well, there's a system like that in this game, but it has an online feature to it. Basically, you get more residents. You get one for every person you connect with online. So, the way the people you get, one resident each. Your friend, one resident each. And the residents, you get them to do requests in restoring the main character's hometown. And this has many benefits of unlocking additional super special moves that you can personally customize name and make shout outs and use those and send. So, you like, uh, I picked one and I called it uh, Praise the Sun and it's... I'm trying to walk on it I want to do a send of it and they'll be like, Praise the Sun! So... You know, I, I can be praising the sun for my sun bows out there. And it, it's really nice. Um, a lot of these things are making me feel like they're kind of like... I know people probably ain't going to like this kind of comparison, but they really remind me of like little microtransaction games on like Facebook and mobile devices. Especially the town and... Because you basically spread out your residents to do tasks to uh, build stuff and get equipment for sale and stuff. Um, and they're all time-based. But the more people you have focus on what task, the less the time takes. So you could spread them all out and work on multiple things for a long term. Or focus on one thing and shorten it to like minutes, maybe one hour. It's kind of an interesting idea. And you get more special abilities available, items, 
equipment and uh, the stuff that's available at the stores in the town there, the town you're restoring, uh, can be purchased at the save guy. So you're making that stuff available every time you run into them. So I personally think items are more porn, but the uh, equipment obviously has a uh, useful use to it too. Um, there's also, um, when you connect with people, you also get monster invasions in your town. And the lowest I've seen is a level 10, so I haven't been able to beat it yet. And, um, I didn't play shitloads of the Heroes of Light, because I was considering doing a Let's Play of it, so I didn't want to go insanely far in it. But I think this one monster is actually a boss in the Four Heroes of Light, I think. So, somebody can probably correct me on that, too. But I think he is, so... And, um... It's pretty, it's pretty fun secondary thing to check on once in a while. And there is, and this is one of the things that's going to make people cringe, there is something to buy with real currency, which makes some of the stuff in here feel like little micro games. But it's not in the town or anything, it's in the brave points. Apparently, um, there are sleep points. When your DS is asleep, um... Over time, it cu accumulates sleep time. Um, I think it said eight hours to get one, I think. Somebody might correct me on that. It only talked about once. And I basically didn't care, because basically it's leave in sleep mode for a long time to get one sleep point, or buy them with real money. And my understanding, sleep points are basically additional brave points. So you can buy extra tones basically and I think that's stupid and it's a horrible mistake but at least there's a way to get them and it's not necessary there's plenty of other ways to play and it's all RPG so if you're going the easy way out I don't know why the fuck you're playing RPGs for but so far it looks like it's all shaping out very nice the art design is very nice like so the backgrounds are like a painting art world. They're not 3D looking and there's moments where you can go behind pillars and such. I haven't seen a lot of it but there were a few times then. And it's pretty nice. At first it's a little odd though because you know everyone, all the other characters are 3D walking on this painting so I kind of feel like a 2D style might have been a better choice but that's just a personal taste. Um, I got a little more used to it and some of the environments look a lot nicer like the desert town looks incredible incredibly nice to be honest the voice acting there is voice acting and not all the lines are voice acted um, if you're familiar with Tales games um, in a lot of Tales, in a lot of modern Tales games there are all group conversations you can activate where the party members will talk to each other and stuff and uh, that system is actually in here, where you can have group conversations amongst your party. These parts are not voice acted, but of course they add story. And obviously average NPC talk, not voice acted. Pretty much everything else is voice acted. And the voice actors so far, pretty good. Pretty good. Excellent. I'm liking it. And the music's also very nice. I also like the monster art design, too. Now, I do find the counter design a little... Ah, because, like I said, it it's a more involved form of the Heroes of Light. But, um, there was some censorship in the game, basically, to talk about. Um, some of the job classes had more revealing outfits for the ladies. Just a few of them. And they basically added a little extra clothing and stuff to those outfits. And, uh, I know they're in the American version. I'm not sure about the European version. And personally, I think that was odd, considering, um, while I think there is a few more adultish touch to some of the characters, um, overall, I still think the art design does not really point to that kind of thing, you know what I mean? It's not like Catherine, you know what I mean, where it has seductive sexualization everywhere, you know what I mean? So, it has a very simple design, so it, it just seems a little odd. So, personally, I don't think that's a giant loss myself, but, I, you know, I doubt one for censorship either, so I can, I can see some people being upset 
about that, but I don't consider it a huge loss. The game's functional, and the job classes still exist. I've seen much worse censorship, so. I think I've went over most of the plane stuff, and overall it seems pretty average. You know, you got land, you got airship all the way in the beginning. You get pretty early. It's a lot like Final Fantasy III, where you kind of had just a little arc of mini quests in the main story, and then you get airship. And, um, it seems like it's kind of an involved form of Final Fantasy 1. Because it involves the crystals, and they're basically all dead and not functional. The sea is watered, fire is starting, the wind is stopped and such. I mean, it it's like it involved Final Fantasy 1. But, you know, it's not like time travel. At least I hope it doesn't involve time travel. Oh my goodness, I could probably ruin the whole thing, to be honest. Um... I think I've talked about pretty much everything, really. Everything I know of so far. I'm really enjoying it so far. And I actually would love to get more friends uh, on the game, too. So I will be including my 3DS friend code, which is uh, what you need. You just simply add your friend codes. Both people have to add them. So if you add me, leave yours in the comment below, and I will add you, too. And we can use each other's characters in our bravery defaults. And we can all praise the sun together while saving our worlds. Because in this bravery default world, time is deluded. Eh, trying to do a horrible saw here yeah, though. But uh, I really recommend the game. I've really been enjoying it. The six hours just make me think this could be... Like, this could be a contender for one of the best RPGs of this year or way. Now, um, just basic RPG. Now, obviously, like, uh, Dark Souls 2, I'm looking forward to probably being one of the best uh, action-ish RPGs of the year. But, uh, turn-based classic style, this could possibly be the best of this year. And it could possibly be, hands down, one of the best Square Enix has done in a long time. Which is really a shame, and it really makes me wonder why this game wasn't just called a Final Fantasy title. This game oozes Final Fantasy, but it's not called Final Fantasy. And it makes me kind of wonder, because several years ago, I think it was like two years ago, Square Enix talked about how... 13, and I believe it happened after 13 2 came out, well, the Final Fantasy... Um, the Final Fantasy brand was hot and damaged and such. And I kind of wonder if they were just like, yeah, let's not call it Final Fantasy. Uh, I don't think it's going to sell well under that. We need to call it something else. I do wonder, I do wonder. But who knows? It's funny, a game now in the Final Fantasy series feels more Final Fantasy than some of the last few entries. I mean, I don't hate the original 13, but I certainly feel that it should have been more of a spin-off entry, if anything. But anyway, I recommend Bravely Default. Get your friends. You'll have tons of fun. I actually like a lot of the online ideas, because, like I said, so far, I haven't seen them breaking the game. Even though I have a multitude, not shitloads, but I have, like, five job classes available now, so... I have a variety, and even with people I can summon, and being linked to Carter, reaching off monk skills, I still found the last four bosses I fought challenging, and two of them were very life-threatening, to be honest. <laughs> so, I'm really enjoying it. It's pretty decent, and, um, oh, one more thing, actually. I didn't go over a lot of options. Not exactly something I usually talk about. Um, in the options, you can control almost everything in the game. The encounter weight can be set to zero. The difficulty can be set to high. You can, on, you can turn on, off, experience, job points, money. You can customize everything now. Now, why is this a pawn now? Um, it lets you customize your game on the fly. You know, you can be a cheap ass. You know, it's like I'm near dead. I'm in the middle of the dungeon. Encounter weight zero. Dun -dun -dun. 
na 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 heel na 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 and count back normal or whatever you want to do that. Or you can change the difficulty. And these options are useful for the type of people who are sadistical than Dark Souls players. Like, I want to solo the entire game with one character, no experience, level one, with uh, max job classes, you know, turn off experience, but have job classes level up. You know, there's a lot of different ideas you could do for challenge ones. You know, have everyone level one, max job classes, though, you know. It, you could, or vice versa, level one job classes level up and stuff, or none, you know, whatever you think you're sadistic enough to do. Um, that adds a lot more variety to those who want challenge ones. And personally, I don't usually do a lot of challenge ones, but um, it's appreciate added feature. And of course, when you're grinding, you know, just max the encounter weight. Max the encounter weight. So, I mean, it. It's abusive at the same time, you can balance it, or you can just go sadistic, you know, you can do what you want. It's pretty nice. I like the options. I like the idea. I think it's something to consider in future games. Anyway, I've babbled long enough. Boy, we default. Recommend. Go buy. Get a 3DS. Give me your friend code. Here's my friend code in the description down below. Let's team up, save the world, and praise the sun!